want to congratulate you for this Bible study. You may say why, but what, by the time we are done, I'm sure by the grace of God, you'll be jumping wherever you are. Amen. 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 Welcome to the Bible study. I hope you have your Bible. I have mine. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You need to bring out that Bible, bring out your notepads, yeah, all your electronic notes and physical notes, anyone you use, they are all okay. You need to go into the Bible. We have a lot of word to go through this Bible study. So we're going to go into the word to see and know and then apply by the grace of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are dealing with authority and it's very profound, especially at this time. It's really very profound. Authority is a decider these days and it's not going to change. It's not going to change. Nothing will change. The world as we know it, I mean the system of the world as we know it, is gone. Now, if you are a Christian without authority or you don't know your authority, I'm afraid. I'm really afraid. You, 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 it will be, I won't say it, but I would prefer that you get back quickly to understanding your authority in Christ. So, We've been dealing with a uh, choice of weapons. We, because <laughs> what we have, uh, authority is not for making friends. Authority is for establishing the truth. The truth might be established by peace. It might be established by discussion. It might be established by resisting the opposition. It might be established by standing in the truth regardless of whatever. So you need to know because authority is power. So you need to understand it. And last time we talked of uh, the weapon of angels. Now this time we are going to this real one also. Angels are wonderful. This one even makes the angels available to us. And some of you don't see it as... Um, a weapon, but it is. We shall see as we go towards the end of the teaching. We'll give an example to put everything together to see that it is an awesome authority, awesome weapon of choice. And what are we dealing with today? We are dealing with positional authority as a weapon of warfare. Positional authority, positional authority as a weapon of warfare. <laughs> In fact, all other weapons come from it. Yeah. When we talk of positional authority, we are saying, or we are referring to our current spiritual position. Now, some people have this problem. You just see yourself as you. You don't see yourself as God sees you. And they be, that's where the problem really starts. The moment you keep seeing yourself as you, you will miss who you are before God. And you miss who you are in the spirit. You will lose every battle. With all due respect, you will lose every battle. <laughs> now, let me... Be very clear here. Position commands authority. Even in our world. The president just made an announcement today and then everything changes also. So position commands authority. Now, add this to it because this is very important. The level of authority Authority defines and identifies the level of power. So your position defines or commands your authority, but the level of authority, they are not the same. There are A, B, C, D, and so on. 
that level of authority you have defines one and identifies your power. In the spirit, in the physical. Yeah. I hope you got that. Amen. Now, we are going to somewhere. Before we understand our positional authority and how it becomes a weapon, how it plays out in the uh, battlefield of life, in the spirit, in the physical, um, we need to start from the scratch. Because that is where we really miss it. You first have to believe it, then before you can use it. And before you can use it, or before you can believe it, you must understand it. And accept it. So, you first have to believe it, and then you can use it. But before you can believe it, you must first understand it, and then accept it. When you accept it, after you have understood it, then you can you believe it. You don't believe in a book, you believe, and then you use it. Now, so, where are we? That's the first question. Where are we right now, you and me, who are born again? Where are we in the spiritual space right now? Where are we? In the spiritual ladder, where are we? So, now, let's start it from the scratch. So, we can explain and get to where we are. If we start from where we are now, we will not understand. It will, it will create problems. People will not be able to use it. Faith will not be built. This teaching is about building your faith so you can see this as a weapon and know all the paraphernalia of power that are attached to it. So, the first step, I put them into four, 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 four steps. The first step to where we are now is one, the word, one word, justification. Everything that Jesus did for us is to justify us before God. What is justification? I will use a legal term. Justification means you are legally acquitted. Before God, you are legally, legally acquitted from every sin and every guilt. Therefore, you are justified before God. And when you are justified, you are declared righteous. Without it, don't even talk of opposition. Uh, position. Don't even talk of position. No, it must start from there. Now, why is it so? Because we we were we were not we came from somewhere. <laughs> we were not justified because we were right from our birth. No, no, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, what happened? Somebody took away that sin. His name is Jesus. Man. And when he took that sin away. It's an exchange. Exchange is righteousness, gave it to us, and took away our sins. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. By his stripes we were healed. So, now look at a scripture that explains these two. There are so many, I'm just selective. Go we have a lot of scriptures. Scripture number one. To describe the exchange and then to confirm the justification. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin. He made him who knew no sin. To be sin for us. To be sin for us. That we might become the, yeah. the righteousness of God in him. New Living Translation. I want people to understand this. You have to. If you don't, um, it's not going to work. For God made Christ. He made Christ. Who never sinned. Who never sinned. To be the offering for us. To be the offering for our sins. So that we could be made right wow. with God. Correct. Through Christ. Correct. We are made right. And it happened on the cross. Jesus didn't go there because he was sinning. No. He had no sin. But he came to exchange, take away our sins, go to the cross, nail it there, pay all the price for it, and say we can go. God, once he did it, God said, oh, I acquit you. You are discharged and acquitted. There's no more record 
of sin against you. That is the foundation of position. And then, how did God do it? Where is it confirmed that we are justified? Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1. Verse 1. Yep. Therefore, mm -hmm. having been justified by faith. By faith. Please, don't forget it. Everything we are talking today is by faith. Justified by faith. You believe in Christ by faith. Not because you went into the water and they dip you in the baptism. And they give you baptism. Card. No, you believe by faith. Uh -huh. We have peace with God uh -huh. through our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Finish. We have peace. No more quarrel. No more settle. No more antagonism. We are no longer enemy of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That, that's step one. Now I'm going to break that step one a bit down to tell you what happened. The moment we are justified, now step two. Our legal papers, please, there's a legal paper in heaven. There's a book. There's a legal paper. Remember, there's a court. <laughs> Our legal papers were changed. We moved from being enemies, aliens, as the Bible, some uh, this, uh, uh, translations describe it. We moved from being aliens before God. We moved to become Children of God. Child of God. And it is written in the book in heaven. That we, you, me. Once we have given our life to Jesus by faith. We are now child, children of God. So let's see our alien. So we know where we are com coming from. And know why we were justified. And why we moved. How we moved. How we moved. To become to the position where we now become Power. So, let's go. Alien. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 21 to 23. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 21 to 23. Uh-huh. New Living Translation. Yeah. Anyone? This includes you. Mm -hmm. Who were once far away from God. Far away. You were his enemies. You were his enemies. Separated from him. Separated from him. By your evil thoughts. By your evil thoughts. And actions. And actions. Yet now, uh -huh. he has reconciled you to himself. Hallelujah. Through the death of Christ. Hallelujah. In his physical body. Hallelujah. As a result, Hallelujah. he has brought you uh -huh. into his own presence. Uh -huh. And you are holy. You are holy. And blameless. Blameless. As you stand before him. Acquitted. Without a single without fault. Without a single, single fault. 23. Uh-huh. But you must continue mm -hmm. to believe this truth you hear that? and stand firmly in it. You hear that? Don't drift away. Don't drift away from the assurance you receive. Don't even move away from it. When you heard the good news. Hallelujah. The good news has been preached all over the world. Uh -huh. And I, Paul, mm -hmm. have been appointed as God's servant uh -huh. to proclaim it. Hallelujah. As I'm proclaiming it today, hallelujah. Amen. So that's the alien part. That alien part. As aliens, we have nothing. We are less than nothing. But something happened there. We are moved. So when we, our, our alien status was cancelled, something else took its place. We became sons and daughters of Yahweh, of Jehovah, of the Almighty, of the Father our, of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, mm -hmm. to them he gave the right to become children of God, uh -huh. to those who believe in his name. Uh -huh. Simple. Then first John, look at it. So you know where you are now. Let's see where we are now. Uh, to them who believe, we know that. On account of two shall a matter be established. So let's see. First John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. What did he say? First John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. 1 to 3, uh-huh. See how very much our Father loves us. Uh -huh. For He calls us His children. We are His children. And that is what we are. And that is what you and me and everyone who is born again, that's what we are. Amen. Uh -huh. But the people who belong to this world uh -huh. don't recognize that we are God's children. No, they don't. Because they don't know Him. They don't know Him. 
Verse three. Verse three. Uh-huh. Dear friends, uh-huh. we are already God's children. We are already God's children. But He has not yet shown us what we will be like uh-huh. when Christ appears. Uh-huh. But we do know uh-huh. that we will be like Him. Hallelujah. For we will see Him as He really is. Uh-huh. And all who have this eager expectation uh-huh. will keep themselves pure. Yeah. Just as He is pure. Yeah. Have you seen it? He said, the first one we read, say, continue. In that Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, 21, up 23, verse 23 says, we must continue that faith. This one say, uh, those who know that you are now sons and daughters, you must purify yourself, keep yourself pure. Now, so from sonship, there's something else that happens. Because before you become a Namibian citizen, you must first be born by somebody in Namibia, or according to their definition in the constitution. You can't become a city where you are not, unless maybe you are nationalized or something. But by that, by biology, you must be born by somebody who has a root here. So we are now born children of God. So what do we become? We become citizens. Citizens of heaven. We are still on stage two. Citizens of heaven. So where is it? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 19 to 22. Verse 19 to 22. Uh-huh. Now therefore, uh-huh. you are no longer strangers yeah. and foreigners. Mm-hmm. You are citizens. Citizens. Along with all of God's Hallelujah. people. Hallelujah. You are members of God's family. Uh-huh. Together we are his house. Uh-huh. Built on the foundation of the apostles uh-huh. and the prophets. Uh-huh. And the cornerstone uh-huh. is Christ Jesus himself. Hallelujah. We are carefully joined uh-huh. together in Him, uh-huh. becoming a holy temple, a holy temple for the Lord. For the Lord. So that's who you are now, a holy temple. That's what I am now. Good. So, <sighs> Pastor, you said there is a book. Yes, there is a book. Is this development is recorded as a legal document? For you, for me, for everyone who gives his life to Jesus. And it's in heaven. Look. Jesus was telling them. He said, ah. They were saying, hey, we thank God. Demons, demons surrender to us. Hey. He said, no, 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 no. Don't bother about that one too much. You should thank God because your name is in the book. If it was not in the book, that demon would not bow. I'm paraphrasing it now. If it's not in that book, <laughs> that demon will not surrender. That miracle will not happen. John, uh, Luke, sorry. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, uh-huh. uh, New Living Translation. Yeah. But don't rejoice. Don't rejoice. Because evil spirits obey you. Uh-huh. Rejoice. Rejoice. Because your names uh-huh. are registered in heaven. Registered in heaven. Register. Register. In heaven. In the book. Straight. Jesus was clear. So, the registration of you are being justified, of you are, okay, first of all, being an alien, then being justified, and then being made uh, a son or a daughter, being made a citizen, they are all recorded. Amen. As you are there, they are recorded. Amen. Demons check it. Powers check it. <laughs> because he's the source of power. He's a decider in battle. I'll give you an example. Let's go on. Now, we are now going to stage three. First of all, we are justified. Now, we are sons. We are citizens. There's a book recorded. So what? Now, what happens? Hey, this step three is the, is the real Baba. Now... Suddenly, you are here, or, okay, let me use myself. As I'm here, I am in two places right now. How? Because, uh, first of all, I got a union with the master. So wherever the master is, I'm also there. And wherever I am, the master is there. And that master is Jesus. So how? How is it? What is the union? Where is it in the Bible? Okay. There's a union. 
the moment you, you become a child of God, born again, all things are gone, justified, written in the book, you are united with Christ. It's a spiritual wonder. That's why, wow, we are dynamite, if you understand it. The day I understood it, my life changed. The enemy began to fear me, and I don't fear them. After today, they will be afraid of you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, let's talk of the oneness. How did we get united? We got united because we are justified. We are made sons, citizens, name written in the book. Then God kept his promise to make us one. First Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. But he who is joined to the Lord uh -huh. is one, one spirit with one him. One spirit with him. <laughs> one spirit with him. Now, let's break it down. I have three scriptures. There are many, but I just took these three. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. He broke it down further. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. Uh -huh. For we are members of his body. Members of his body, Jesus. Of his, his body. flesh. Wherever he is now, his body. We are members of that body. Of his flesh, even when he was here. And uh -huh. of his bones. And of his bones, even when he was here. So, that united in the spirit, yeah. Then members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. Now, this is the one. When God confirms this next one to you, my friend, you become a, 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 a weapon. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. For you died. You died. And your life is hidden with Christ. Your life, yes, you, me, is now inside Jesus. Wherever Jesus is now, that's where your life is. Amen. And you're afraid of Corona. You're afraid of the witch. But your life is in Christ. Where is he? We are going to see that. Don't worry. Wherever he is now, that's where you are. That's where I am. Remember, we're talking of positional authority as a weapon. Uh -huh. So, we are united. Uh -huh. For you died with Christ. Yes. And what? Your life mm -hmm. is now hidden with Christ. In, 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 for you died to this life, uh -huh. and your real life is hidden with Christ uh -huh. in God. In God. Finish. <laughs> so, that is step three. Now, let's go to step four. Step four. We have a lot of scriptures, <laughs> more than 10, because that's where. So, we got justified, we became sons and daughters, became citizens. There's a book open for us. Now, step three, we became one with our Lord and Savior. One. That's why, when it comes, we shall be like him. In heaven, the only blessing we will look like is Jesus. It will just be like we are. So, step four. Now, remember we are talking about position. So, where is Jesus? What position is he holding now? Because that will decide our authority. Wherever he is, remember we are one. We are also there. And whatever authority he has there, we have it too. That's where the weapon becomes weapon. That's why those who know this weapon, they don't joke with sin. They don't toy with sin. They don't mess around. And if they fall, they quickly come back to God. Quickly. Quickly. Because they know what it is. They don't want separation. No. So let's look at one, the positional level of Christ. Where is he now? And then second, he, the authority of that position. So we're going to take the position. Where is Christ now? Where is, he? Where is he now? Let's start with one thing. I want to start with this first. 
to show you that wherever he is now and the position he is now, we are sharing it with him. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 says we are sharing it with him. So before we go to the opposi uh, position and the authority, let's look at who shares what. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Uh -huh. And since we are his children, uh -huh. we are his heirs. Uh -huh. In fact, uh -huh. together with Christ, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. We are heirs, inheritors of God's glory, God's power, God's everything with Christ. John, one, one. If it takes one, we take one. If it takes two, we take two. If it takes three, we take three. <laughs> Ooh. Power. Somebody say power. Power. Now, so, where is Christ? Before we start sharing, we know now we'll share. Wherever it is, we'll share. Now, let's start from, from here on earth. What happened on the last days of Christ in the body? Mark 16 verse 19. He said it nicely. Mark 16 verse 19. Uh -huh. So then, uh -huh. after the Lord had spoken to them, uh -huh. he was received up into heaven uh -huh. and sat down at the right hand of and God. And sat where? At the right hand of the Almighty. The one who existed before the heavens were created because it was the one who created heaven that means he was existing somewhere before he created the heavens and the earth oh uh, yeah he, he didn't create the heaven while he was still in heaven no he was somewhere and after everything has gone he will remain the same that same god jesus the son of god is seated at his right hand and you are inside him amen remember you are one uh-huh Okay, let's go on. We will confirm this because this is very hard for so many people to believe. And even when they believe, they don't see it as real. You must see it from today. Amen. Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 32 to 33. Acts 2, Ch yeah. Chapter 2, verse uh -huh. 32 to 33. Uh -huh. God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. And we are all... He witnesses of this. The apostle has said, we were witnesses of this. Uh -huh. now, now, he is exalted uh -huh. to the place of highest honor eh? in heaven. Eh? At God's right hand. Eh? To the where? The place of highest honor. Me, Isaac, he came to come with it, and you, we are seated there. Amen. To the place of highest honor. Please, please, don't, don't, don't turn away from me now. I'm not making hocus pocus. I'm quoting scripture. The word of God. I didn't write it. You didn't. God wrote it. Men wrote as they were led by the spirit. And the father, mm -hmm. as he had promised, mm -hmm. gave him the Holy Spirit <laughs> to pour out upon us. To pour upon us. Just as you see and hear today. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, okay. Let's go back to the same Acts of Apostles. I like to put this one. I put it there because uh, it was the way it resonates. As for Apostle chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. We are discussing where is he now? Where is Jesus, our Lord? Mm -hmm. After saying this, mm -hmm. he was taken up into a cloud uh -huh. while they were watching. While they were watching. They were there. They saw, that's why Peter said, we are eyewitnesses to these things. Uh-huh. And they could no longer see him. They, he disappeared. They, he rose, rose, rose until the clouds took him. As uh -huh. they strained to see him. And they tried to see him. Rising into heaven. Uh -huh. Two white robed men uh -huh. suddenly stood among them. Uh -huh. Men of Galilee, uh -huh. they said, uh -huh. why are you standing here uh -huh. st staring into heaven? Uh -huh. Jesus has been taken from you yes. into heaven. Into where? Heaven. Uh -huh. But someday he will return Hallelujah. from heaven mm -hmm. in the same way you saw him go. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, um, please kill that doubt. Eh? That uh, Tatekuru is not where you are. That uh, uh, Opo is not where you are. Um, that your village is not where mm, That your church is not where you are. No, no, no. No, it's the garden of those who are with Christ. Church is a garden of people who are one with Christ. We know that uh, the enemy has entered the church. We know. But God knows them also. We are talking of real children of God. Uh -huh. So, 
We now establish that Jesus is at the right hand of God the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, the one that has no equal, the one that cannot be compared with, the one whose eyes is eyes of fire, the one whose voice is like many rivers, the one where the mountains keep like lamps before him, and much more. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so what is that level? The level is measured by the authority attached to it. The Bible says, highest honor. Okay, what is attached to that highest honor? Let's go. Now we're about to talk about the power. Then we'll go to examples. Highest honor. Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. Uh -huh. Therefore, mm -hmm. go and make disciples of all nations, uh -huh. baptizing them in the name of the Father. Verse 18, sorry. Verse 18. Verse 18. 18, yeah. Jesus came and told his disciples, uh -huh. I have been given all authority. How many, Pastor? All authority. How many? All authority. All. Nothing is left. Everything that has to do with authority to do anything, power to do anything, say, my father gave it to me. <laughs> and um, you remember? You were inside, you are inside eh? Not where you are. I am. When he received it, my father gave it to him. And I also got it. It's, a, it's a very, very sad that people have, don't believe these things. But demons believe it. And even wicked people, all these demonic agents, human beings, they believe it, they know. They know, they know, they know they can't travel with you. They do other things. That's why they like to blackmail you, uh, paint you black, make, do, do, raise all kinds of uh, dust around you because they know what you, some of you don't even know. They, 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 they can't go beyond, they can, they can run around and run around. Jesus approached and breaking the silence mm -hmm. said to them, mm -hmm. All authority, mm -hmm. all power of rule, all power of rule in heaven and on in earth, heaven and on earth has been given to has me. Has been given to me. So that place where Jesus is seated, our Lord, where we are inside him, seated with him. All power, all authority has been given to that position. And you share in it, I share in it. Because we are joint heirs with him. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> we'll break it down. We are not talking of the authority now. We have seen the position. Now we want to see the authority attached to the position. It says it's all power. Okay. Is it true? Let's see. Uh, uh, First Peter. Chapter 3 verse 21 to 22. First Peter chapter 3. 21 to 22. Uh -huh. And that water is a picture of baptism, mm -hmm. which now saves you, mm -hmm. not by removing dirt from your body, no. but as a response to God uh. from a clean conscience. Uh -huh. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now Christ has gone to heaven. Uh -huh. He is seated in the place of honor uh -huh. next to God. Next to who? <laughs> That's why Satan hates you. And hates me. He, he never sat there. He was just a musician in front, far away. He could not. Now we are seated there. Ooh. Next to God. Uh -huh. And all the angels and authorities. All the angels and every other authority, including and that your strong man, including that Sangoma, including that president, that prime minister, they are all were subject to him. And powers uh -huh. accept his authority. Accept his authority. Remember, all power in heaven and on earth. So it's two. <laughs> That's why children of God are the ones that decide the affairs of nations. Please, be, be, let's be frank. Uh, uh, please accept it. Uh, uh, a child of God can decide what happens to a nation. <laughs> there are many examples in the Bible. And there are many examples that I personally can give you. That 
Oh, it's boasting that yes, in Christ. That would decide certain things here in Namibia. Yes. In Africa. Mm. Oh, yes, oh. But we operate in love. We are not butchers, no. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Is somebody following me? Amen. Okay. Now, let's go. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of scripture. We are talking about the power. Mm. Okay. We'll see the dimensions. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Uh -huh. For in Christ uh -huh. lives all the fullness of God. All the, in Christ lives what? Every, every completeness of God is in Christ. And you are inside him. I am inside him. Oh, beautiful. Uh -huh. In a human body. Uh -huh. So you also are complete uh -huh. through your union with Christ. Did you, did you hear that? Uh, Pastor, did you hear that? Amen. You, me, all of us, we are now complete through a union with Christ. Oh, I didn't hear hallelujah shouting from everywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you are also, so you also are complete uh -huh. through your union with Christ. Uh -huh. Who is the head? Who is the head? Over every ruler Ed and oh. authority. Oh, Jesus, na biggie man. Jesus, na biggie man. Who no no one call us sumo boy? Jesus, na biggie man. Who no no one call us sumo boy? Jesus, na biggie man. Biggie biggie. Jesus, na biggie man. Who no no one call us sumo boy? Jesus, na biggie man. Who no no one call us sumo boy? Amplified. Uh -huh. Verse 10. Uh -huh. And you are in him, uh -huh. made full. Made full. And having come to fullness of life. Yes. In Christ, uh -huh. you two are filled uh -huh. with the Godhead. Kukum. Father, Son, and Holy and Spirit. Complete. And complete. They are inside me. And reach full spiritual they stature. Uh -huh. And he is the head uh -huh. of all rule, all rule and authority. All authority. Of every angelic principality oh. and power. That's why Satan doesn't like you. And he make sure you don't understand it. That's why Bible study is critical. When you expose, the Lord of God will expose who we are. It's a book of revelation. If you grasp what I'm talking today from the word of God, not from my head. If you take it to heart. My friend, you will be shouting hallelujah until Jesus comes. Because Amen. you will keep on winning every battle. It's not that battle will come. They will keep coming. They will come even more. But you will win. You will win. And that's why Jesus says something. Uh, let, let me just digress a little. Let, Jesus says something. Um, in in uh, Psalm uh, 34 verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19. Uh -huh. Men, the righteous, many evils confront the righteous, uh -huh. but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Uh -huh. Verse that 20. He keeps all his bones. He keeps every little bone, every bone. Uh -huh. Not one of them is Not broken. Not one is broken. The enemy cannot fight you and leave a mark. The enemy cannot fight you and score a goal. <laughs> Not one bone is broken. Why? Jesus is inside you, the hope of glory. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I'm teaching you the secret of power. Uh huh. Now, let's hit it direct. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Uh -huh. Therefore, uh -huh. God elevated him to the place of highest honor uh -huh. and gave him the name above all other names, uh -huh. that at the name of Jesus, uh -huh. every knee should bow, uh -huh. in heaven and on earth uh -huh. and under the earth, uh -huh. and every tongue declare uh -huh. that Jesus Christ is Lord uh -huh. to the glory of God the Father. Finish. And who is this person 
Jesus. And who is sharing this with him? You and me. And every child of God, anywhere, regardless of color, height, position, you know, physical position in life, it doesn't matter. It's by faith. That's why Paul can tell that demon, hey, come out. He came out. Say, yeah, you clairvoyant spirit. Oh, yeah, I take you out. <laughs> the clairvoyant spirit did not know the difference between Paul and Jesus. All he saw is that uh, there's a command he cannot disobey. The command he cannot disobey. Because it's coming from the ruler of all authorities and rulership and powers in heaven and on earth from an exalted position that there's none higher except the Father. That is equal with the Father. And you are equal with him. So when Paul said, come out, he has to come out. When I'm telling the demon, out, I, I may out. <laughs> He's out. I don't have to question it. I'm not going to say, ah, when they say I will not go, that means you are gone. It's easy. That one is very easy. So how does it translate to us? Two scriptures. Before and after the death of Christ. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Behold, mm -hmm. I have given you authority mm -hmm. and power mm -hmm. to trample upon serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. and over all the power that the enemy possesses. Yeah. And nothing shall in any way harm you. No, so why are you running from that enemy? Why are you fidgeting that something came to have sex with you? Did he? Did he? Did he have sex with you? Do you know that it means he's having sex with Jesus? Uh, he, he's having sex with Jesus. <laughs> what a terrible sex. <laughs> because you are one with him. You are in him. And it's in you. As it's in me. And I'm in him. That demon should come more. It should come more. <laughs> so that he, he will know the difference between who is in him and who is not. One servant of God, when the, 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 the demons came to say, Ah, you want to have sex with me? I say, Come. But remember, uh, I'm in Christ, eh? so you're having sex with my master. Suicide. There used to be a song I used to sing. After I decided that no, um, it's not really right. Because there's something that God said. I will sing that song that will tell you what God said. He said, Kingdom come by power, by fire. Kingdom come by power, by fire. Where is it coming from? No, the Bible says the kingdom is inside you. The, the, it is please the Lord to give you the kingdom. So where is it coming from? Unless you are saying kingdom manifest by fire, by yeah, that's a, a different thing. You are saying the kingdom, maybe the come means manifest to make it simpler for singing. Anywhere you are, you are Christ. That's why you are the aroma. I am the aroma. If you understand this thing, if you enter a lift and an agent of darkness wants to share the lift with you, he will regret it. Even the imprint, your spiritual signature that you left in the lift will destroy him. In the elevator. I remember that man. I told you that story. In Venimo. 
I was waiting for my wife. It was going to do what they do, lingerie. I didn't want to go there because some people say pastor is buying lingerie for women. Ah. So I sat outside by the bench they put her on the aisle there. So I, she didn't waste time. She came out quickly. So I stood up to go. One man just, I think he was, uh, he was eyeing that place. He, he wanted to sit down. Maybe he was waiting for something. He just came out and said, hey! I said, I, I turned back and looked. I said, I laughed. He was looking at me. He was rubbing his buttocks. <laughs> I said, this man needs to give his life to Jesus. He, he doesn't belong to God. <laughs> yeah. He, he, I sat there, Jesus. This one that sat there. And it's fire. The one whose eyes is like fire. Flames of fire. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Mark 16, verse 17 and 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Yeah. And these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Uh -huh. They will cast out demons in my name. Yeah. In whose name? Once you say Jesus. Because it's the same with you. That's the name. That's the authority. Uh -huh. And they will speak in new languages. Uh -huh. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. Uh -huh. And if they drink anything poisonous, uh -huh. it won't hurt them. At all. They will be able they to... They give you food in the dream. <laughs> it's a waste of ritual. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. They will be able to place their hands on the sick. Hallelujah. And they will be healed. Uh, now you, you place your hand on the sick, you carry the sickness. Something is wrong. <sighs> Something is wrong. Okay, before we go to that. Now, let, let me give you an example. How this becomes a weapon. We, we are seeing a glimpse of it, glimpse of it. Let's see particles. I want to use a word that is very common. Everybody knows that story. The, part, uh, the, the story of religion. Mark chapter 5. Now, please, I want you to listen to that story in a different way today. See that, that those demons, they didn't fear anybody. And nobody could stop them. But look at when they met authority. See what they did. Uh -huh. Mark chapter 5. Verse 1 to, to 7. Just to save time. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gerasim. Uh -huh. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. Uh -huh. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even with a chain. Nobody could restrain him. Nobody, even chains could not stop him. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, uh -huh. as he often was, uh -huh. he snapped the chains from his wrists and uh -huh. smashed the shackles. And smashed the shackles. <laughs> one man. <laughs> no one was strong enough to subdue no him. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves uh -huh. and in the hills, uh -huh. howling and cutting himself with sharp uh -huh. stones. Uh -huh. When Jesus was still some distance away, uh -huh. the man saw him, uh -huh. ran to meet him. Run! This is the man that nobody could stop, nobody could bound. Even the army of that time could not chain. They tried, not that they didn't. They tried, he broke it, and people are terrified. The man lives in, in the tombs, in the, in the cemetery. <laughs> ran to meet him but when he saw Jesus from afar he ran he didn't Jesus didn't call him authority is an announcer when you are in a position they, they will know demons will know I remember one servant of the Lord when he's coming to a town from West Africa when he's coming to a town maybe he's coming to a town like a hundred kilometers from here uh, uh, the moment he, he enters the car to come from to come to that town uh, demons uh, uh, which is uh, sorry which is and uh, all those are called the agents of that they begin to confess i remember i went to visit one man in namibia uh, he's supposed to be somehow uh, an in-law <laughs> i wanted to we just came so i wanted to uh, just Pay my respect. Honor those who are to be honored. I just entered the office after uh, he sent for me to come. I, I, I entered. The moment I entered, the man start, stood up from his office, uh, from his chair. He couldn't sit down. In fact, he, he, he was so, so impolite. 
he couldn't. He, he, he just ushered me out immediately from the office. And the Lord just whispered to me. I said, oh, okay, it's an honor to meet you, sir. I left. I went and sat at the reception. <laughs> because he couldn't share that office with me. Yet, he's one of those making decisions. Wonderful. Ran to meet him uh -huh. and bowed low before him. And bowed. This is the man who could not be changed. Demons could not be changed. He ran to meet the authority, the power, the one who is seated at the right hand. And he bowed. Bowed on himself. Authority is recognized. He bowed. Hmm. Mm -hmm. With a shriek, mm -hmm. he screamed. Mm -hmm. Why are you interfering with me? You hear that? Jesus, son uh -huh. of the most high God, uh -huh. in the name of God, uh -huh. I beg you. He's now using the God to... <laughs> Don't torture me. <laughs> He's using God. Demon is now using the name of God to beg the son of God. Uh, your enemies are beginning to beg you. Amen. If you know what I'm talking today, they will beg you. <laughs> in the name of God, don't torture me. <laughs> what a wonderful authority. And you are sharing that authority. Amen. <laughs> you can finish the story yourself. Uh, we don't have time. Let's look at another. Then I'll tell you one story. John 14, verse 12. Don't you ever forget it. Because that's with me and you. John 14 verse 12. Yeah. I tell you the truth. Uh -huh. Anyone who believes in me. Anyone who believes in me. Will do the same works I have done. Perfectly. And even greater works. Yes. Because I'm going to be because with the Father. Because I'm going to be with the Father. I will be seated at the right hand. You can do beyond what I did here. I only opened the first chapter for you. That's why. Jesus' shadow never healed anybody. Peter's shadow was healing. Jesus' handkerchief did not do anything. Uh, he didn't use handkerchief, but Paul was using handkerchief. And many other things. Greater things than this shall you do. For I go to my Father. And in John 14, 14, he said, Anything you ask in my name is done. Because me and you are the same. Just as he was here in the, in the physical, he said, Whatever I see the Father do, I also do. For I and the Father, we are one. You and him, me and him, Jesus, we are one. By grace. It's a pity that many of us don't want to listen. It's also a pity that we have forgotten that being one with Christ also has responsibilities. You have to live like him. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15. Yeah. And he died for everyone. Yes. So that those who receive his new life yes. will no longer live for themselves. No. Instead, no. they will live for Christ. Yeah. Who died and was raised for them. Period. You are no longer your own. Okay, let's go on. Uh 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, sorry, chapter 6, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. You were bought with a price. You were bought with a price. I was bought with a price. So that 2 Corinthians we read, chapter 5, verse 15, is completely correct. We are bought. You are no longer your own. He bought you so you can be one with you in holiness, in righteousness, by faith. So God bought you with a high price. Mm -hmm. So you must honor God with your body. You must honor God with your body. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I appeal to you therefore brethren. Uh -huh. And beg of you uh -huh. in view of all the mercies of God. Uh -huh. To make a decisive dedication of your bodies. Uh -huh. 
presenting all your members and faculties uh-huh. as a living sacrifice, uh-huh. holy and well pleasing to what? God. Holy and well pleasing because you are one with Him and He is holy. Which is your reasonable service Sacri- and sacrifice. spiritual worship. Yes. Now, this is where we have a problem. There's a lot of doctrines that have made Christians to be nonsense these days. But this is who we are supposed to be. This is who we are. Not that one they t- told you. That you can do anything you want to do. Now, okay. You are one with Christ. Then you use that hand, go and steal. That's, so Jesus is now stealing. Remember? You are in him and he's in you. So when you would set the hand to steal from that till or from that thing or that you, you are now making Jesus a thief. Or you open your legs and have sex with that is not permitted by God. Sex with somebody you are not married to. Now Jesus is now having sex with somebody. How, do you think he will be inside there? No! He will be out. And the enemy knows it. That's why the enemy brandishes this worldliness, sin. He knows that as long as you step into sin, there's a disconnect. You lose oneness. And people are telling you, no, you have grace. You are one, forever one. So when you still, no. The Bible says, if you walk in the light, as is in the light, Walk in the light as he is in the light. Then you have fellowship with him. Then the blood of his son, Jesus, has cleansed you from all sins. Because we're not perfect. We are not, we are not going to be perfected here. But when you propose in deliberately, say you have grace and you begin to do anyhow, you don't have that power. Listen to me. Somebody was having a serious battle. It was almost at the point of death here in Namibia. A child of God, a woman, she was involved in a terrible battle that would have costed her life. So suddenly she saw herself in an altar with her mother-in-law and some members of, of their church. They are in the room and this the altar, they are looking for sacrifice. They say they want to sacrifice her. She is the one to be sacrificed. The people they wanted to sacrifice in the altar, they removed them. Say no, she is the one to be sacrificed. She said she told them, You don't know who you are talking about. Do you know who I am? I am a child of God. Chop! They dropped her. And he want to tell me it's not a weapon. He said, I am a child of God. Ha! They have checked it. There's a book where they also check. They dropped her. You am a child of God. <laughs> they will say, I shut up. They will slap you. Why? Because they know you fell on the other side. And you did not go back. You did not repent. You did not come back for the grace of God to wash you. No. You, they told you, you have grace. You can go on and do. No. You will have no power. You will be a Christian that is food for Satan. The smallest Satan. And this is not the time for it. This is not the word for it. If a Christian who is a Christian now in our days fails to understand that we have enemies from everywhere, then he's not a Christian. I think COVID-19 has made that clear. Whether it's from government or from anywhere, we have multiple enemies. Once there's anything, the first I get is church. Bah. <laughs> That's why you must know your position. When, if that woman did not know her position in Christ and kept her position, she would have died. She would not wake up from that place. Nothing will stop it. They will sacrifice her. But she said, I, she, she, said, she, was, she, said she was talking to me. She said, I, I, <laughs> I laughed at them. I was laughing. She said, you don't even know. She now was started going around the altar and commanded the altar to bomb. <laughs> they couldn't put her there. How? She's seated with Christ. 
above every authority, every power. So where would they get the power to take her to the altar? They were giving somebody charms to give the person charm that you may have power enough, maybe we have enough power to, to hold her. They couldn't even hold her. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what I'm talking about. When you are position becomes a weapon. They want to say, you can't do that to me. I'm a child of God. I use it all the time. I do. I do. And that's why you must live for God. You must live for Christ. You must live a sacrificial life because you have a master to protect. You have a position to protect. You have authority to protect. You have war to fight. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. You are already in the war. I hope somebody's listening to me. Amen. You need to re-examine your position. Check through this. I try to make it short. Take through this breakdown. I try to make it as simple as possible. Remove all controversy. Just put it down. According to the word of God. And check through it. See where you are. Are you still in Christ? The Bible says examine yourselves. Whether you are still in Christ. You have to do it yourself. Once you see that there is this defeat, consistent defeat, consistent defeat. <laughs> okay. L let me share one scripture with you before we close. Psalm 41. Psalm 41. You see what David said there. Verse 11. Oh, and we will read it in as many versions as we can. Psalm 41 verse, verse 11. 11. By this I know. By this I know. That you favor and delight in me. He, hallelujah. Why? Because my enemy does, does not, not triumph, triumph over, over me. me. By this I know. That you are pleased with my life. You are pleased with me. Because you don't allow me to see defeat. It's in the Bible. Hello. Defeat is not for us. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ. The Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love God to them that we call according to his purpose. So where is the defeat from? God never said we know about If you have power, it is for war. It's for you to exercise authority. If you have it, there must be a reason to exercise. There must be a reason why you have it because you have to use it. This nominal Christianity, dancing and dancing, it will not help us. Oh. This uh, nominal Christianity where we do anything we like, it is no longer possible. This uh, nominal Christianity, your pastor tells you, open your legs, he will sleep with you to do deliverance. It is no longer possible. Oh. You are going to destroy yourself and bring shame to Christ. And that's what the enemy wants. When you are in a position just as you are supposed to be, you are a threat. Jesus didn't preach to the demon. The demon came himself and bowed. The same way when you mention the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Everywhere. The Bible says whatever will burn on earth is burned in heaven. Pam. You say, I bind you, finish. Heaven will burn. But you have to be in Christ. You have to live the life of people who be, are in Christ. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You must dwell in the secret place. Psalm 91. You must dwell there. That is where there's power. That's where the, those who are in Christ with one, with him, that's where they stay. That's the life they live. Not the life of soap opera, where you, even you, you're a Christian, you open your breast. I'm seeing half of your breast. He says it's a modern dress. You are a trash. 
Demons will identify you quickly. Enemy will see you and they will succeed. You are doing what you shouldn't do as a child of God. You are a trash. I'm sorry, but that's who you are. They used to tell us a story long time ago when we were little. They said there was a meeting in, in, in the clouds. There was a farm there. And they were going to that meeting in the farm. But they said all the animals are permitted to come except Mr. Goat. So, Goat looked and looked and said, ah, I will not be able to go there. So he had a, 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 his friends, he gathered them, and they had a, an, an understanding. And they said, okay, we are going to cover you. So they tried, gave him, a, and the reason why they put it up is that because goats don't have, uh, they can't fly. So they said, at least he would know that there would not be a goat here because he would destroy the farm. So um, he, he had kind of a meeting with his friends, and they said, okay, we'll help you. Um, um, so they made some feathers for him, and they covered him up with some things so they would not see that he's a goat. So they offered you to the sky and to attend the meeting in that farm. Immediately, God, their goat disappeared and started eating the corn, eating the base. So people say, ah! Is there a goat here? He made, me say, hey! A goat is the one that expose himself. They threw him out. May you not be thrown out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a folklore. We have so many versions of it. They were telling us as little children. The elders were telling us in those days. Many, many years ago. But there's some wisdom in it. You can't be in Christ and be behaving like somebody who is in that altar, in that prostitute house, in that, yeah. You see somebody in the altar, he's singing a song. He's naked. And he say, Holy Spirit, come from where? It's a lie. Oh, don't judge me. Yeah, that's where, how we ended where we are now. Don't judge me. You can't judge me. Yeah. The Bible says, judge yourself. So that you will not be judged with the world. If you judge yourself, we will not judge you. Nobody will judge you. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. The spiritual mind judges everything and is not judged by any. Why are you now being judged? The position you hold in Christ is ultimate power. There are things that can't come near you. There are things that can't happen to you. There are things, even if they happen, they can succeed. He said, not one bone shall be broken. In any way you enter a battle, you win. That's Psalm 42, uh, 40 verse, verse 11. Another version. Psalm 41, verse 41, sorry. New verse Living 11. Translation. Yeah. I know you are pleased with me, uh -huh. for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. Yeah! See, the reason why I don't get defeated is because you are pleased with me. You can't be killing people, going to evil meetings, blackmailing people, backbiting people, gossiping people, uh, plotting their downfall, blaming them for this or that, and then you expect that you will not be defeated. The Lord will be pleased with you. It's a lie. You have to confess it. You have to turn from it. And then he will have mercy on you. And that's what he said. You can check it up in Proverbs 28 verse 13. You have to do it. And he said it also for you, me and you, and you are born again. In 1 John chapter 1 verse, verse 9, you must confess. He's faithful and just. He will forgive. So that he can reconcile you back to Christ where you belong. Where there's power, where there's authority, where you can declare your position and things will happen. You speak. Nobody will know the difference, whether it is Christ or you, because it's the same. May the Lord help us tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is a weapon. You need many of us don't have it.
When you have this weapon, every other weapon will work. Prayer will work. Angels will work. Name it. They will work. The blood of Jesus will work. The name of Jesus will work. Yeah, the sword of the spirit will work. The word of God. By your heads. Wherever you are now, I want you to talk to God. Examine yourself. See whether you are still in the Lord. Or if you have lost yourself from Him, you have disconnected yourself by the lifestyle you live. Yes, yes. <laughs> we don't have freedom to do whatever. You are bought with a price. You live for Him. That's I've shown you, I've showed you in the scriptures. Let them accuse you. Fine. The Bible says, whatever the world loves, God rejects. The world loves his soul. Jesus said so. He said, they hated me, they will also hate you. So don't be afraid of that. Greater is the position than those nonsense things. They are, no, they are nothing. May the Lord give you grace and help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are there, you have not received Jesus. I want to give you this opportunity to receive him. That's the start of everything. That is the beginning. You cannot be justified unless you have received him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you want to receive Jesus now, put your hand on your chest. I'll repeat after me. Say, Father. Father. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he came into this world. I believe he came into this world. Died for me. Died for and me. And rose for my salvation. And rose for my salvation. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Take away my sins. Take away my sins. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. By faith. By faith. In the finished work that you have done for me. In the finished work that you have done for me. On the cross. On the cross. I believe and I declare. I believe and I declare. That I am a child of God. That I am a child of God. I am born again. I am born again. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my soul. I will serve you forever. I will serve you forever. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. If you say that, you are born again. You are a child of God now. You have just entered the best position. You are now with Christ right now. Everything I taught now is yours. Automatic. You will grow in grace, yeah. But everything is automatic. Once you believe, it's done. You are now to know how to walk in grace. To walk in the fullness of the Lord. To walk in holiness. That's why you need to get some materials like the ones that are flash for those of you on live stream from our iStore, the Believer's Manual series, those three books, they will help you a lot. They will lay a foundation. You need to check them up quickly. If the hard copies are gone, please take the soft copy. They are all the same. They are wonderful. And many other materials that you can see in our iStore, they will all help you. Prayer books and so on and so on. I am praying the Lord that He will strengthen you Amen. He will give you the grace to finish well. That He will equip you with His power. Amen. That you will not fall. Amen. That you will not fail. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I cover you and your salvation in the blood of Jesus. Amen. For we overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want you to pray this one prayer. If you know that that position you are there, Pray that prayer. Jesus says something. He said, let nothing trouble me, for I bear the mark. Oh, I mean, yeah, the Bible says so. Paul was saying so. Yeah, yeah Paul, Apostle Paul, he said, let nothing trouble me, for I bear the mark of the Lord Jesus. Pray that prayer this way. Every power Every power harassing me. Harassing me. How dare you? How 
dare you. I overthrow you. I overthrow you. By the victory of the cross of Calvary. I overthrow you. I overthrow you. I overthrow you. I overthrow you. In every area of my life. I overthrow you. 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 In the name of Jesus. I overthrow you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I overthrow you. I overthrow you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to add this one. Say. Powers that want me to disconnect from Christ. Powers that want me to disconnect from Christ. And every work of darkness to pull me out of Christ. And every work of darkness to pull me out of Christ. Catch fire. 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 Catch fire.